this video we're going to see how to build a controller class in Spring Boot. A controller is essentially a mapping of URLs, or if you prefer, endpoints, to a series of Java classes and other things, other resources that are required to fulfill the request of that endpoint. So first of all, before I go too far, I do want to save my work and I do want to have it visible in history. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say Team Share Project. A little dialog comes up. To make things easy, I'm going to say User Create Repository and Parent Folder of Project. Just select this and you see it's going to create a repository right here where my project is saved. So I choose Create Repository. Choose finish and now we can see that we have a repository up here, no head. Right click and team. And I'm going to say commit. Just kind of give us the state of where we are right now. Uh, this is definitely one where we want to double click and uh, and uh, add like so. So the POM we want to commit, the Java stuff we want to commit. Uh, we probably ought to tweak our git ignore file a little bit because it's it's letting some things through that it shouldn't let through. So we might tweak that a bit, but nonetheless, we can start at least with our application and our POM. Uh, let's go ahead and put the git ignore up as well. So other people who clone this project will have that same git ignore. Uh, might as well grab our application properties. Everything else here should be okay. So we'll just call this initial commit of spring boot project. Okay, and commit. And we'll let that go for a moment. Now back to our project. We need to create a controller class. Remember a controller is part of our model view controller paradigm. So under com.plantplaces, it, it's just a plain old Java class. We'll add some annotations to it. But nonetheless, I can right click and say new Java class. And then I'm going to call this just plant places controller. Because it's a plain old Java object, it doesn't need to extend from anything. So Java lying object is fine. And then we choose finish. Now, remember a couple of things we discussed when we talked about MVC in Spring. There are several annotations that we're going to need to use. Uh, at controller, we put on top of the class, and we're about to do that. Then at request mapping, we put above a method uh, to say we're mapping this method to a certain endpoint. And then request param is simply saying these are the parameters that we're going to pull in. So for plant places controller, we simply say at controller, just like so. It doesn't recognize it right away, uh, so Alt Enter. Whoops. Control 1 in Eclipse will oftentimes uh, uh, help us to automatically fix things like this. So Import Controller. And you see, you see sure enough, it imports the correct package, the uh, org.spring framework. We're going to do a lot of work in here, so I'm going to uh, focus on this file itself. And I'm also going to bump up the font. I will say that that is... Uh, probably one of the hardest, unusually hardest things to do in Eclipse to change a font. Most things will use control mouse wheel to change a font, but Eclipse you have to go to uh, colors and fonts and then you have to find the right editor, which many times can be a little bit tricky. Uh, so we'll go with uh, Java editor text font, edit font, and we'll bump that up to 16 and OK and apply and close and you see okay hopefully that's a bit easier to view now a little tricky but nonetheless we got it now within this i'm going to make a method method could have any name but essentially it's the method that is going to handle our endpoint so i'm going to say public void and then we can say start if we want and uh, actually that should return a string because it's going to the string is going to help us to determine what page to show so public string start okay now, redline, why does it why does it give me redline? Probably because I'm not returning anything. Uh, so let's go ahead and say return start in quotes to make it a to make it a string. You could call this home, you could call this index. The idea is this is just our very first page, whatever that is. Now up above, I'm going to say at request mapping, and we'll say double quote and then slash start. And then just like so. What that means is, okay, uh, anything that goes to our URL and then has slash start is going to be mapped to this method. So this is an endpoint that's going to follow uh, maybe our domain name, so plantplaces.com and then slash start, something like that. Now you see request mapping is coming up red because it needs to be, Im uh, it needs to be imported. So I'm simply going to uh, click 
Now this is interesting because you notice when I clicked there was an option to create that annotation but not one to import it. So I pause the video for a moment and I noticed that my palm requires another entry that wasn't there before. So what we need is this dependency right here, org spring framework boot and then spring boot starter web. Uh, that gives us a little bit of the web niceties that we're going to need for our application. Now back to our file and I'm going to click on the uh, plain places controller and I'm going to click and you see there's an option here that didn't used to be here which is import request mapping. So we go ahead and we import that and sure enough now the uh, request mapping is resolved. Now a couple things I want to point out here. First of all notice I'm using at controller. At controller allows me to specify how I'm going to respond uh, and in this case I'm using at controller because I'm saying here, I'm saying down here, I'm saying return start. And what I actually mean is go find a page called start.html under source main resources and then templates folder. We have not made that yet. I just wanted to put, excuse me, I just want to point that out now. On the other hand, if we make this rest controller, it gives us a little different functionality. I'm going to keep it as controller, by the way. But uh, rest controller, it automatically handles the response and it really just kind of assumes that it's going to respond with some kind of text. So a couple different things that you see there. REST controller will just send this back as the literal text where controller is going to look for an HTML file. Now just curious why the difference? Well remember that REST usually means, REST typically indicates some kind of endpoint, some kind of services endpoint that will more often be read by a computer than read by a human. So there we just want to kind of spit out a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of data. Where uh, without REST, if we just say controller, we're thinking more about human interaction. And so it makes it easy for us to marry this up with Timeleaf, where Timeleaf is going to intercept this word called start, and it's going to look for an HTML file called start.html under the templates directory. So let's go ahead and make that. I'm going to collapse this. I go to, I could go to source main resources as we see here, or I could go the long way as we see down here. Either way, right click, new, and then I'm going to say other, and we'll simply say folder. And there's our folder. And next, and we're simply going to call this templates with an S. So, whoops, templates. just like so, and then finish. Now underneath templates, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say new, and then new, uh, we'll say other again, and I'm going to look for HTML because this is essentially just an HTML file that any user can see. So HTML, and we'll call this one, uh, might as well call it index, oh no, no, we already said we're gonna call it start, didn't we? Start.html, just like so, and I'm going to choose finish. Now, this is a very basic HTML page. One thing that Eclipse does, though, is it doesn't properly terminate this meta tag, and we need that to be properly terminated. So we put in that meta tag, and then I say plantplaces.com, uh, virtual arboretum, something like that. Okay, body, and we'll say uh, welcome to plant places, something like that. Okay, and save. One nice thing about Spring Boot and, and all of this integration is that a lot of things automatically deploy once we've started our application. We do want to start our application, and as a matter of fact, I would like to add a breakpoint. So in this request mapping, I snap a breakpoint on line number 12. You see it kind of has that blue, whoops, kind of has that little blue indication right there that we have a breakpoint in this method. Now to start our application, I just need to go to this Plant Places application class uh, this is one of the first classes that we'll have in a Spring Boot application. It usually is named application or something of that nature. In our case, this was generated for us with Spring Initializer. But nonetheless, you can create it by hand if you want. Just a dozen lines. Fairly straightforward. Right-click, choose Run As. And uh, actually, I'm going to choose Debug As. And I'm going to choose Debug As Java Application. Now, watch the console because it's pretty neat. What it's going to do here is it's going to start up our application and grab any dependencies it doesn't already have. Um, as a matter of fact, it can grab Tomcat 
and start that up for us, which is pretty handy. So all of that happens in less than five seconds. As you see, it's already started. So I navigate to my browser of choice and I just put in our local address 127.0.0.1 and then port 8080 is the default port for Tomcat. And then let's go to slash start, hit enter. And first of all, look down at the bottom, you see that Eclipse is highlighting orange, which indicates that a debugger breakpoint has stopped. That's great news. So I hit switch to go to the uh, debug uh, to the debug perspective. One thing that's a little confusing with Eclipse, it changes these perspectives depending on what you're doing. In this case, this is the debug perspective. By perspective, I mean the arrangements of windows. So you notice this is a different look and feel than we had earlier. The first time I used Eclipse, that totally confused me. Nonetheless, uh, we see that it has reached our controller and it's reached our request mapping. So I'm going to, head and choose, uh, going to go ahead and choose F8 to tell it to continue. And then I'll go back to our browser and take a look Welcome to Plant Places, and sure enough, even the tab has plantplaces.com virtual arboretum. So, a uh, real simple one here. No, by the way, to switch uh, to switch perspectives, just take a look at these buttons on the top. They'll take you from debug, where we just were, uh, to Java EE, where we were just a few moments ago. So nonetheless, a pretty straightforward, quick and dirty application, but we see that sure enough, our Spring Boot application does work as expected. We have to have this application class. It has to be properly annotated with that Spring Boot application. We need this controller class. We need to map any URLs that we wish to map, and we want to map them to a series of uh, templates, where the templates are, in our case, are simply HTML files. We know that's ideal for a user's look and feel into this application, but we know we can also make a REST controller class, which is just spewing out data, not so much dealing with templates. Now, if you look at our template, you see it's a normal HTML file, and it is rendered as a normal HTML file. So we can use a lot of the UI frameworks that we're used to as part of the Spring Boot application. In other words, Spring Boot does not dictate to us what user interface framework we need to use. Uh, it's HTML, so there are quite a few different libraries that we can plug in if we want, JavaScript, CSS, all of that stuff. This will get us off to a good start, and we'll continue building on this through the semester. Thank you.